El Post Almighty God. To ask questions, not to be shy. It's, it's good in making mistakes, God. That's how we learn. Father, I just want to give you the honor and the glory and the praise. I just want to lift you up on high and tell you thanks for hearing and answering. In Jesus' mighty name we say, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Morris. Sister Kamiko. You're welcome. Good night. My name is Kamika Bailey and I'm here to do the scripture. Our scripture will be taken from Psalms 119. Blessed are the undefined in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the, with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his way. Though he has commanded us to keep thy precept diligently, O oh, thy way. Oh, that my ways are directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When I shall have learned thy righteousness, judgment, I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed? Dear to, dear to according to thy word. With my own heart have I so thee. So let me not wander from thy commandment. Thy, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed are thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgment of thy mouth. Have I rejoiced in the way of thy, right, of thy testimonies as much as in all riches? I will meditate in thy precept and have respect un, unto thy ways. 16 and last. I will delight myself in thy statutes and I will not forget thy word. Here ending a portion of God, holy word, we honor thy sin. Amen. Amen to the word of God. The host will now be playing the nice hymn.
bless the Lord. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, even me, even somebody like me. Can you just unmute your mics with me tonight as we just send up some praises unto God? Just tell him thank you for loving me. Because guess what, my brothers and sisters? We could not have earned the love of God. Nothing that we could have done would have helped us to qualify for God's love. But out of his own self, for his own name's sake, he loves us with an everlasting love. So I'm going to just invite you to unmute your microphones with me as we send up some praises tonight it's bible studies and we are just going to set the atmosphere for the word of god to come and lodge in our hearts tonight hallelujah shall we just bless the lord tonight can we just give him glory can we just lift up the name of jesus hallelujah lord you're worthy lord you're wonderful god you're mighty in power you're mighty in battle tonight lord we bless your name we want to thank you for loving us lord we want to thank you for choosing us we want to thank you, Lord, for giving us life, Lord, when we did not deserve it. You want to thank you tonight, Lord God, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, die on Calvary. Lord, we want to thank you because God, he, oh, he paid a debt that he did not owe. God, we owed a debt that we could not pay, Lord God. We were in sin. We were condemned to die. But God mercy says oh no oh no we've already Christ to sacrifice of the son Jesus I can wash out my sins tonight okay. but the sacrificial blood of Jesus Lord I thank you Lord God I thank you for Calvary I thank you Lord the songwriter says at Calvary my sins were erased at Calvary Jesus my place hallelujah at Calvary there is amazing place and tonight lord i want to thank you lord for calvary for this place called calvary i want to thank you our heavenly father god for loving me even when i did not love you but when lord did not know how to love myself lord you first to love me and you taught me how to love god and i thank you tonight that your love is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell god it goes beyond the highest star and it reaches to the lowest hell oh precious love of god i want to thank you tonight oh precious love of god i want to thank you tonight god almighty for this precious love that led you to the cross thank you jesus thank you mighty god thank you heavenly father Thank you, Abba Father, tonight. We bless your name and we lift you up. We crown you with many crowns. God, we adore you. We worship your majesty tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord God, for there is none likened unto you. There is none compared to you. Lord, you are he who takes away the sins of the world. God, we just thank you tonight. Lord, we just bless your name tonight. Lord, we thank you for what you have done and we thank you for loving us when we, God Almighty, were in no position, Lord to require this love of you. Lord, we thank you, Jehovah God, for this beautiful plan of salvation. Lord, we just thank you tonight. We bless your name and we worship you. We give you glory and we give you honor, hallelujah. We lift you up tonight, God, for there is none, there is none like unto you. There is none compared to you, Lord. You are the fairest of 10,000 tonight. Hallelujah, I wish somebody could just help me to just take this moment and just invite the presence of God in our Bible studies through our worship tonight because when we worship our breakthrough comes when we worship miracles happen when we worship chains are broken when we worship souls are delivered hallelujah blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord our God Lord we thank you tonight and we bless your name. Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor. 
Lord, we bless you for you are good towards us. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Blessed be your wonderful name. At this time, we are going to be hearing from the man of God, the servant of the Lord, Reverend Ralston Powell, who will be coming to us to lead us into a study in the word. I trust that your hearts will be blessed as you tune in. Hallelujah. Reverend Powell. Praise the Lord to God be the glory. Good evening again, my brothers and sisters. What a joy to Bless God. What a joy it is to be amongst the people of God via this platform another week as we come together for a moment in the word. We have so much to be thankful for in spite of all that's happening around us. We can truly declare that God has been good to us and we worship we honor i want to greet you on whatever platform you have joined us on this evening whether you are on zoom youtube or any of the other social media um, i'm not sure if the link up is made with facebook and um instagram but whatever you are on and you are a part of the moment in the world of Glendevon New Testament Church of God, Sun Valley Road, Glendevon, Montego Bay, St. James, Jamaica. We, I greet you well. I trust that the passing of Elsa had not disturbed you in no way. And um, you are doing all that's possible to keep yourself safe from the pandemic that we are still facing and still trying our best to cope with. Well, you know what, brothers and sisters, God remains God. So this evening, as we come together for a moment in the word, we look, we started last week on verse 19 of Revelation chapter three, as we tried to wrap up the final of the seven, seven churches. So verse 19 through to verse 22, read thus, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an hear, let him hear for the spirit seed unto the churches. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you're a God that never change and cannot change. We come another Tuesday evening, another moment in the word. Father, I pray that as we come this evening that your Holy Spirit will be in charge. We pray for illumination, we pray for understanding. Lord, we are cognizant of the fact that the area Glendavon, Montego Bay, is having challenges with uh, the internet feed. But we commit, Lord, the, the, the atmosphere, Lord, and the service to you. We pray for stability in the internet feed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, you give man the wisdom, the knowledge to implement these systems. And Lord, we thank you for knowledge. 
But we know that because it's man who has set it up from time to time, it malfunction and we have challenges. But tonight we pray that as your word is about to go forth, that Lord, you will take over. Lord, we come against the prince of the power of mid-air. Oh, glory be to Almighty God. And I pray that the Holy Spirit of God, glory to God, will intervene, hallelujah, and will take over. We commit tonight's study, the moment in the word, to you. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit will anoint, unctionize. We pray for understanding. We pray for illumination. We pray for receptivity. We come against every glitches and every distortion. We pray that tonight things will be done orderly according to the Holy Spirit lead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have been looking at over these couple of months, right? On the big topic, what type of church are you? And as per usual, once we get down to the local church, then the subtopic would have been according to the local church that we are observing. Over the past few weeks, my brothers and sisters, friends, and those who have joined us from other churches, over the past couple of weeks, our attention has been focused on the last of the seven churches, the church of Laodicea. Tonight, we are at verse 19, we started last week, and as I said, the subtopic is, are you like the church at Laodicea? So it's for individual and churches to use these studies. As we said, the objective of these studies is for us as individuals and local churches to have a panoramic view of our individual selves and our individual Christian lives and the church or the congregation that we are a part of. You know, sometimes when we do these studies and if we, we really want to strive, then sometimes we might have to pull up roots. I mean, somebody don't quote me that I'm telling anybody to leave the church now, but uh, the Bible says that as I hear, let me hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Last week, brothers and sisters, just to recap, as I said, we were on verse 19 in his declaration to the church at Laodicea, to the Laodicean believers. Jesus declared that the reason for his reprimand to, to the church to be whatever is that he was strongly warning them in regards to their position. And he is saying that the reason why he's reprimanded them is because. He loved them. And um, as one person said, you know, love can be um, hard, but it's not cruel. And we, we, as we said that it carries the idea of discipline. Discipline is done to castigate or to chastise with words in order to correct the 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 wrong um, i want to pause as we reflect on uh, you know what discipline means as jesus disciplined um the the, the Lodician because he loved them when we when we struggle as believers to accept the word the the spoken word because it, one of the things is that there are times when we can read the scripture and we can the moment we start reading a passage or a verse and it is speaking to us and we are not that mature or, you know, our conscience might not be as alive as we would love for it to be. We can flip pages. We can flip pages. But when the spoken word, you know, there are times when we we put up a, a defense against the, the spoken word. But if we remember what the writer said about the word of God, and um, when Paul, in writing to the Ephesians, he allowed the brethren to know that of all the, the, the armor which we have of God, the word of God was the only weapon which he has given. And when you just pause and think about a weapon, a weapon, if it is dull, it is non-effective. 
might as well you throw it away. And the Bible talking about wetting the blade is getting the blade sharpened. And the, the sword that Paul introduced to the Ephesians brethren, he said it was a, the sword that was sharp. That is, it talks about the, the, the potency of, of, of the, 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 the sword or lethal that weapon is. So we have to understand that the word of God is lethal. It cuts, it pierces, it injure, but it also corrects, it heals, it revives, it strengthens, it gives life, it takes life, and it, 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 it gives life. Very paradoxical, very paradoxical. It corrects, it, it, it enlightens. So when we put up a defense, you know, a rebellion against the word of God, when we at times are of the opinion that, you know, preacher comes and preacher preach at you, um, it, this is something I've been looking at over the past week. All of last week up to this morning, I, I, I've really been examining, you know, what it means. And I said, if someone comes to church, if someone is at the church and feels that the preacher is preaching on an individual, it says two things. Two things. One is that God loves you and he's chastising you. Two is that your life is not in order. Your life is not in order. So the word is pricking you. Well, you know, instead of, as Jesus would have said, when he closes any one of these letters, they that have an ear to hear, you let them hear what the spirit said unto the churches. So instead of hearing what the spirit is saying unto you as an individual or unto the church, the church goes up in rebellion. I want us to understand. This is what um, Jesus was saying. Uh, he loved Laodicea. So he was strongly, and the, 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 the reprimand was strongly worded uh, Jesus made his intention known to the Laodiceans. He, he made it known for what reason? To bring them under strict discipline. When you think about discipline, you're thinking about bringing yourself under rigid and strict training. So when you think about discipline, you think about training. Paul said, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed to the word of Almighty God. I, I don't know if all of you who are on this platform tonight, if all of you are from the Glendavon Church, or you are from other churches, or you are friends of members of the Glendavon Church. If you are at a church, and your pastor preaches, or a, a preacher comes in and preach, and the word of God it's home. Don't criticize. No curse out the pastor. Get on your knees and pray. Say, thank God I'm still a child of God. Thank God you remember me. Thank God. Because you are the word of God. Say, whom he loveth, he chasteneth. And what better way for him to chasten you? You would rather for him to put you on a bed of affliction? Or you rather him what you good with some of his words. So Jesus' advice to the church was to be zealous and repent. Move with urgency. Oh, are we going to correct my friends? So I want to pray for you. I feel the spirit coming on and I, I want to take my time. Oh, are we going to correct our ways? If we don't have the word of God, again, we quote the psalmist, we are with Allah. Or in other words, tell me, oh, can a young man cleanse his way? And this goes for young, old, middle-aged, male, female. And some people, we don't know where they are. But how are we going to, to change? Because it is the word of God that guides us. The same psalmist tells us, the word is a lamp unto his feet and a light unto his path. The same psalmist said, he hides the word of God in his heart. And he does that so that he will not sin. So he, he, the, the, the word of God is a preventative measure. It's a preserve. So it preserves, it prevents, it keeps, it guides. Hello, somebody. It pricks, oh Lord. 
Can, can I start preaching about the word tonight? So what Jesus Christ was saying is that he loves them, note carefully, note carefully, their spiritual status. They were lukewarm. So to Jesus, they were indifferent. And I'm just recapping. They showed no need of him, but he still loved them. So without his word, without the word of God, somebody, I, I wish you could type in the chat and tell me, oh, it can be done. Without the word of God, how oh, are you going to know that Jesus Christ still loves you? Without the word of God, how oh, can one know is or her status with Almighty God? Because you, you see, with the Lodicians, they felt comfortable with where they were. So it is Jesus coming in with his word who opened up their eyes and their understanding, illuminate himself before them so they understood where they were. Because without the word of God, we can have a preconceived notion that all is well. So Jesus Christ showed his love because this was a church that they had no regard for him but they were still a church you know mark you and this is a challenge i have with ladisia and let me hope that none of the churches around is like this they were in the church but they had no regard for jesus they were backslidden Jesus never tell them, tell them backslide. He addressed them as the church, still a part of the body of Christ. So it was out of his love for them. He rebuked and disciplined them. This was out of the good intention Jesus had of seeing the wrong be made right. So Jesus was saying, take the necessary step to correct your missteps. Take the necessary steps to correct your misstep. So Jesus said, therefore, and we continue now, be zealous and repent. The word zealous from the Greek, bezelou, means to boil, to burn with zeal, to move with sincerity and earnestness in repenting. Be zealous. Make it a habit. Let it be a lifelong course of zeal. So what Jesus was calling the church to was in total opposition from their current status. What is your current status, somebody? Remember, they were about to be vomited out because they were lukewarm. I thought somebody would have typed that already. They had not been zealous. So there was no heat. There was no urgency. There was no sincerity. They were not, they were not there was not this fervency and they, they were not Hot for Jesus Christ. Oh Lord. Is there any Lodicians among us tonight? So Jesus Christ was now urging them to get boiling. Can I tell somebody? Oh, I wish somebody would just type in the chat, start to get boiled, get boiling. Jesus was saying to them now, desire earnestly. 
to pursue, to get to repentance. Follow, pursue to follow. So the denunciation of Jesus, of them, testify to the fact that they lack zeal. So Jesus' advice, Jesus' advice is to get hot, start boiling, get fully committed. One of the worst position one can be in is half commitment. Half commitment, we, we, we can't, thanks. We can't make a determination. We are not sure where your allegiance lies. Hmm? What is zeal? Zeal is an eagerness of desire to accomplish or to obtain some object. And it may be manifested either in favor of any person or thing or in opposition to it. So when you talk about a zealous person, someone who has zeal, remember, zeal can be either positive or it can be negative. It is all dependent on what direction your zeal is in. Is that a amen, somebody? So it is an eagerness of desire to accomplish. What is your zeal this evening? Is there an eagerness on the part of the believers to accomplish something for Jesus Christ? Or is it that your zeal is directed in another direction? What direction is your zeal in this evening? What direction is your zeal in? And I want to give you a few seconds to think about it. Because any area that you start to pay attention to, that is where your zeal is in. So we ask the question, what is your zeal? Where's your zeal this, this evening? But the question may be asked though, why was this urgency? Why was this urgency on the part of Jesus Christ? No, remember what Jesus said, because you were Luke, because you are Luke one. What is he saying? The urgency came about because Jesus was about to spew them out of his mouth. So the urgency, my friends, was for the church to take corrective measures. And the corrective measures was to prevent Jesus Christ from spewing them out. So they were to move with haste. I, I want us to understand, I want us to understand, that while he calls us to repentance, he will not shine forever. There comes a time as in um, Romans 9, 15, he said he will show mercy to whom he show mercy and compassion to whom he shows compassion. It is saying there's a time when he would have withdrawn his mercy. As we look at the closing verse, they don't have an ear to hear, let it hear what the spirit. So this is a warning. So judgment. And remember, God has never destroyed. He has never allowed judgment to take place without first giving that opportunity to repentance. No wonder why he had to put up um, a sea block, turn up tsunami in the sea, start something in the sea to stop Jonah on his voyage from not going on his journey where he was sent. 
I want the church to understand that we have been sent on a mission. And whatever mission that we have been sent on, it is expected of us to accomplish same. I'm in church. So the urgency of the matter is that judgment lieth at their door. So Jesus was about to act. So before he had, he wanted them to get the opportunity to deal with their current situation. Is there any among us this evening that you think that the spirit of God is speaking to you, that there is a need to hey, become zealous, move with urgency, get hot about changing. Now, this was the fourth direct call to repentance in the seven letters. Revelation 2, 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent. Jesus addressing the church at Ephesus. Remember from where you have fallen and repent. Revelation 2, 16. Repent, or else I will come unto thee uh, quickly. Programmers. Revelation 3, verse 3. Remember, therefore, all thou art received and heard and hold fast. Repent. Sardis. The Greek word for repent or from the Greek, metanu, it means repent or turning to God. It is a turning away from sin. It is to think differently. It is to change one's mind for the better. Remember the, 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 the parable or the story Jesus gave of the two brothers, one younger than the other. The father asked them to do an errand and the young one said, uh-uh, no, 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 I ain't gonna do it. The older one, showing his maturity, say, okay, no problem, dad, I'm going to do it. But then he left and he did not accomplish it. No, the younger one who first blurted out that, hey, I'm not going to do it, he now turned around and get the task done. That is saying to us, my friends, that repentance has to do, do with a change of mind. And then when there's a change of mind, a change of intention, then there will have been a change of action. Is there a amen, somebody? In the Hebrew, repent means, comes from the word, knock on. It means to be sorry. It is to have pity. It is translated to repent 41 times and to comfort 57 times in the Old Testament. To repent is to make a strong turn toward a new course of action. This is not, you see, what these original languages are saying to us. It is not just a change of mind. It is not just stop doing something. It is a strong turn toward a new course of action. The emphasis is more on turning to a positive course of action rather than a turning from a less desirable course. So in other words, it's not just a, a, a turning away from, because you know, there are times one, for example, being an alcoholic, you can stop being an alcoholic, but that doesn't mean 
that your life has been changed. There are some aspects of it that might, might, might be changed, but there's not an entire transformation. Might be because of sickness. So on the advice of your medical advisor, you might stop the smoking, stop the drinking because you know the, the vital organs are being affected by your lifestyle. So a change of lifestyle is not necessarily repentance. A change of lifestyle, you stop eating this, you stop going here, does not necessarily mean that you have repented. What the original languages are saying to us, that repentance is something that is positive, a positive course of action which has been taken and you, you turn away from and you turn to that which is now positive. Metanoia means it's an afterthought or it's beyond thought. Meta coming from metonia meaning after or beyond, as in the modern word metaphysics. A nous meaning mind as in the modern word, paronyai. So metonia is commonly understood as a transformative change. So from the original language, when Jesus said repent, what he's saying, there must be transformation. It's a transformative change. Evidences must be there that change has taken place. A transformative change of heart, especially a spiritual conversion. The term suggests change of mind, repentance and atonement. Therefore, the call to the Lodicians was for an immediate act of repentance and a requirement of them to make zeal a part of their everyday life. What Jesus was saying to the church, they should become enthusiastic about God. Are you enthusiastic about God this evening, brothers and sisters? And if you are, to what degree is your enthusiasm is for God? Now, the background to the importance of the call to be zealous and repent rests on the fact that being lukewarm for so long would have strongly impacted their lives. That even though being made aware of their condition, they would not have any zeal to make a change, contrary to that, to moving away with zeal. Their move would rather have been one that was slow with reservation. Because you have to understand, finding themselves in this position, not backslidden, still going to church, hello? Still have your position, but not zealous. So they were comfortable. So why, why, why what is all this about? Why, why, why all this change? I mean, aren't you seeing me? I'm in church every Sunday. When you analyze the Lodicians, 
what we have discovered, because of the lukewarmness, there was no earnestness. Neither was there any sense of urgency about moving from their condition. So Jesus was using the Greek term, yes, spiritual apathy. Jesus was using the Greek term of repentance, which was, or which is to decide decisively. You know, there are some repentance that are half-hearted. They repent, but they don't repent. Not fully committed. The songwriter said almost persuaded, but still lost, you know. Still lost. It is not to delay. So when Jesus was speaking to them, Jesus was saying to them, don't delay in your decision. So when he said, be zealous and repent, what he was saying, don't delay. Don't be like Lot's wife. Move with alacrity. Move with speed. Move with haste. Move with earnestness, with urgency. Move with sincerity towards repentance. He was saying to the church, come to grip with this immediately. So in other words, you don't have time to go and ponder. Like Joshua, when he called Israel, she came. And he said, make up your mind. He was not sending them back home to a family discussion on the matter. No, it is important for us to know, church, that repentance is a no situation. And sometimes we'll have unsafe coming to church. And when, you know, the invitation, sometimes even church members will quarrel that you are forcing people to get saved. And especially if they are family members, you want nobody pressure them to get saved. Jesus Christ, the word of God, so we must bid them to come. Why is repentance a no thing? Because we have no promise of tomorrow. Jesus said, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So when he spoke to the church at Lodicea, he was saying to the Lodician believers that you need to act and act decisively, act with urgency. Now, when there is an emergency, an emergency is urgency. So you don't have time to worry about how you look or whatever. You are moving with speed. As uh, Bishop B.C. would have said, speed unknown to man. You're moving as if it's a life and death. As a matter of fact, indeed, it is a life and death situation. It's important. for us to note and understand that to repent does not mean to vow not to do it again. Neither is it a promise to do better next time. When we view it, from this concept, the concept of to vow not to do it again, or to promise to do better next time, it takes on a legalistic way of trying to get God's approval. However, the call of God is for a change of heart, not a mind. It's for a change of heart. Thus, this brings us to verse 
20. Verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. If any man hear my voice, I will come in and open the door. I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Revelation chapter 320 has been used over the years as a foundational text in evangelism geared toward getting sinners to let Jesus come into their heart. Let us look, however, to whom Jesus was speaking. So simple put, therefore, I want us to understand that this text which has been used for centuries of years as an evangelism tool. It's not really an evangelism tool, you know, while it can be used. We need to note that it was addressed directly to a particular congregation. So turn with me and let us see to whom Jesus was speaking. Jesus was speaking to the saved believers of the church at Lodicea. <laughs> Are you with me, church? They that have an hear to hear. No, they, behold rather, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, and open the door. I'm in church. This was the believers at Lodicea that Jesus was speaking to. He was speaking to the city of Lodicea. He was talking to the believers, the church. The same believers, he told that he had a preference with their spiritual condition. He had a preference and he had a problem with their indifferent attitude towards him. As a matter of fact, simple put, Jesus said to the church that their condition was nauseous, it was upsetting. The condition caused him to vomit. It wasn't the sinners and the ungodly. Jesus was saying that he stand. Remember now, Jesus told John that he was in the midst of the churches. So here was Jesus in the midst of Lodicea. And he was saying, I am knocking at your door. It is the same church. <clears throat> that he just called on to be zealous and to repent. And here Jesus was saying, I am standing at your door. I am knocking. This was a demonstration of his love for them. Behold, he do. Look, take note. See, so it was calling their attention. He was saying, take note, look, I am here. Take note of me, I am here. 
But I'm not just here and not doing anything. I'm not just here as an observer. Am I with your church? He said, take note, man. Look. See, in other words, perceive. Let the thing register. Just don't have a casual look. It's not a glance. Jesus was saying, you must be deliberate in looking. Observe, take note. What is it? What's the picture you get in mind, believers? The picture here is of a person standing outside of a building. As all the intention of going inside, but is being prevented of getting on the inside because the door is locked. Mm. Because the door is locked. One of you start thinking, what is it saying to the church? What is it saying to you as an individual? Jesus said, be what I stand at the door. And you get a picture. You come to a building, you come to church, you want to go in, you get to your home, you don't have your key, you want to go in, but the door is locked and you are knocking. Why are you knocking? Because you want to change your current position. You want to move from the outside. So you want to come on the inside. So this is what Jesus was saying. But you know what? We discover that there was a barrier. So Jesus is calling the church, the church's attention to his position. Easter me, to cause or to make, to stand, to place, to put, to set. So Jesus was saying, you have allowed me to be standing on the outside. From the Greek lexicon, the New Testament Greek lexicon, it is to be to stand by in the presence of others. So here he was. So when you take note to where you recognize where he was. So it's not that Christ is absent out of the church, but it is simple saying that the church has locked him out. Oh, somebody need to say, ouch, have mercy, oh Lord. So while he bids, he desire of coming on the inside, the church has put up a barricade the church has put up a stop sign. No entry. So although the church is blocking him out, Jesus is still saying, I want to come in. Open the door and allow me to come in. Let me hope is that go my, 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 my time is going. So at your church, Jesus moved to call the attention of the church first to his position. Where was he? At the entrance, your heart, the door. Door represents entrance or exit. It either allows or it prevents. It either allows or it prevents. So it prevents if it is locked. 
poorer used of any opening like a door, an entrance, a way or passage into. There are two things, two things, believers, two things, and let us know that. We see popping out of the first clause of the text or of the verse. We see a closed door and we see a seeking of permission to enter. A closed door and we are seeing a seeking of permission to enter this closed door. You might be saying, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who is it? No church. Come with me a little. Stretch your imagination. Is that your pastor seeking a permission? You know, it is Almighty God, the all powerful. He was the keys of death and hell. And what he locks, no man opens. And what he opens, no man can shut. But yet, he stands at your door and him pounding. He's rapping. And when he spoke to the Lodicians of his intention, they were accustomed to those heavy doors with some wooden keys that kept the door locked. So nobody could just bolt in. They're according to the Orientals traditions. When there are doors in your private area, so they call from outside the gate because once they enter through the gate, no, they have access. So when they call from the gate, remember Peter? When, when the angels deliver him from prison, he stopped at the gate. He was at the outer gate and he knocked. The damsel opened the door and she saw him at the gate. He was at the door. He was outside at the gate. Because once the gate is open, you let him in. Oh, Lord, help me. I wonder what door you, you have opened. What are you letting in? You, you, you can't be letting in anything. I'm like, you know, Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. So what we see here? A closed door. We see a desire to get behind those closed doors. Jesus, I could have just kicked down the door and walk in. But we know that he created man with what is known as volitional will, free being. That is why he could have put restriction apart from just passing the rule to our four parents in the Garden of Eden. He could have put a barricade to prevent them, but he's not a dictator. So he's not going to dictate to you and I how we should live. He gives us his word. So it is his word that is our guide, that is it, it is a word of God that governs or let me take out the word that and put in should. So it is the word of God that should govern our lives. So Jesus seeking permission. And if permission is being sought, there is definitely a desire to enter. And this desire is being acted upon by taking the initiative. <clears throat> so although he has a desire, he's not waiting on you and I to invite him. You know. He has taken and he took the initiative with Lodicia. So he wanted to get into them, but he did not stay ever considered, all right, like Abako, I'm going to sit up on my watch and see what are you going to do. I'm going to stop talking on your behalf, so I'm going to take my seat. And I'm going to see what you're, you're going to do. And like Jeremiah said, oh, every time I chat, them stone me, and every time I chat, them want to kill me. God, me stop chatting on your behalf. Thank God. God could only be God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus, having a desire to enter, he took the initiative. I want us to know how important this is. That Jesus is always active 
in seeking to bring his people into a right relationship with him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, learn of me, for my yoke is easy. My brother, oh, everyone that thirsts, come, come to this water, drink, drink of this fountain. It is Jesus Christ, my friends, who has always made the first move. Oh, really? Is that so, Pastor? No, I went to the altar. Oh, you thought you think so? No, 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 no. You just didn't get up and go to the altar. You know what Jesus said? No man could return to the Father unless he's drawn by the Spirit. So Jesus is always the first, he's always the initiator. Mm. So he initiated. But most time, what we do, we rebel. Stiff naked. <laughs> I'm in church. Yeah. I want us to know, people of God. I write this one down. Look at Jesus coming down to man and asking man permission to let him come in. <laughs> this is Jesus coming down. Coming down to man and say to man, I want to come in, you know, man. I want to come dine with you. Allow me the privilege, though. Give me an opportunity. Give me a chance. Listen to the Lord in Romans 9, 15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So because he wants to show mercy, being a merciful, a compassion, full of mercy, full of grace, full of love, full of compassion. So when we deserve to be killed, when we deserve to be locked out, when we deserve to be ignored, he's saying, I'm knocking. I want to come in. Hey, hey. Is there anybody tonight you're hearing that knocking? Ah, Lord. Can I tell somebody tonight that Jesus Christ is knocking at your heart door? Pass a little church because I want this thing to sink in, you know. Here was a church. But oh, Jesus Christ was not in the church. Oh, Jesus have mercy. Church, what's going on? Good program. Outreach ministry. People were getting saved because of all the technocrats and all the money people and all the managers, church of boom. No one problem, people were coming in the church. But what happened? <laughs> they were in the church, but Jesus was not in them. Oh, Jesus. What a reaction tonight. I saw him closing. I was hoping that I would finish it tonight, but I, I promise I think I've gone over um, half hour game, one hour teaching. I, I normally want to stay within one hour. I want to stop. So Jesus come to church. But the church lock out Jesus. <laughs> Behold, I stand at your heart door. I stand at the door and I knock i'm knocking what happened here this was not the original church no. there was once fellowship there was a time when there was heat vibrancy when the church was on fire but what they became indifferent Get too rich, get too sophisticated. Can I go local church? 
get too comfortable, too relaxed. So the zeal, the urgency we have for Jesus, the zeal to work for him. The days when we usually say, I want to do this, I want to do that. No, we have gone to the position where the hands are folded and we are saying, oh, and I'm use somebody else because, you know, X, Y, Z. Hello? So there was a time when the fellowship, what was, what was happening with the church? Oh, Jesus was seeking permission to enter and reestablish that fellowship. Seeking permission. I want to realize that there are times when Jesus is seeking permission to come into our worship service. Because all we are seeing, a lot of times, a lot of emotions, a lot of self, a lot of talent expose, a lot of show. And less of Jesus. Glory to God. So Jesus seeking permission to enter, it is alluding or it's a representation of the seeking Christ. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus Christ is always on a seeking mission. He's seeking to enter the heart of man. But you know what, church? While he knocks, while he seeks, what is our role? If anybody know what our role is, just type it in the chat before I tell you what is our role. You know what is man's role? He's seeking, he's knocking, he wants to enter, but we have a role to play. What is our role? That's the first question. I am asking the first question tonight. <laughs> is there any scholar a few weeks ago? I show how uh, I see what this respond. No, well, yeah, respond is one way, but how do we respond? Yeah, we, we're going to respond in about how do we respond? We have a role to play by responding, but how do we respond? What do we do? What do we do? Yeah, we respond, but we respond with a certain action. We can respond, you know, by locking the door tighter. <laughs> Hello, is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Who is this day? Open the door. Somebody give a thumbs up for that answer. Yeah, man, whoever DA is, thanks for that answer. Open the door. That is man's rule and respond. That is how we respond to Christ seeking. <coughs> we have to open the door to let him come in. Sometimes you open the door, you know, what we open the door to let in is more of a destructive nature. But we need to open the door to let Jesus Christ come in. Yes, I've seen that. Open the door of the heart and let him in. God bless you. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me this evening for another moment in the world. I trust that as you have stayed with me, you would have been blessed, empowered, enlightened by this evening's moment in the world. It's back to our evening's moderator. Thank you, Rev. The moderator is having some challenges. I'm going to take over from here. No problem. No problem. Thank you again for another powerful night of Bible study. A lot of soul seeking. 
So we, we, we have to know, not only be a listener afterward, but a doer afterward. We thank you Ray, for those powerful studies that you have been giving to us for the past month or so. May God continue to bless and keep you and continue to give you the word that we so need in a time like this. Thank you, man. I will now be um, open the floor to any questions for Rev tonight. Anyone with any burning question, you can go ahead. No. Any question? My question to you, Rev. I know you have you have you have um, made, made a couple of points. Okay. Pertaining to the um the church being the church not as you said they are they are in the church but God is not in the church. What are some of the the ways, Rev, you can identify in our local churches today of such. <laughs> why, 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 you to, why you want to put your pastor in trouble? <laughs> no, uh, That's how we can learn, you know. If we don't hear uh, it, Learn. I'm, I'm going to pass the book. <laughs> I'm going to pass the book. Is there any on the platform who would love to identify any characteristics or traits that would suggest that um, Christ needs to be in our midst? <laughs> I would say the fruits of the spirit are not being exhibited. Why was Scarlett identify the, the absence or of the fruit of the spirit? I just hear say the fruit of the spirit. I want to know, is it that when the fruit of the spirit is manifesting, you're saying the fruit of the spirit is an identify, identification to say Christ is among us. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. All right, great, great, great. So, so, Conversely, then I give you the flip side. So conversely, the absence of the fruit of the spirit, what would that be saying? Absence of Christ. <laughs> uh, oh boy. So another question. Well, that, that would be that, that definitely more than likely. Um, because when you think of the fruit of the spirit, which would not only govern the, 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 that which Galatians mentioned, but there are so many others in, in, in the Bible, you know, thankfulness and um, truthfulness and, and all of these, you, when you're going to Thessalonians and all of that, some of the humility, some of these are the graces, they, they really portray the fruit of the spirit. So if we are not seeing the godlikeness and, and the godliness, you know, then we, we want to question, we want to question whether Jesus is standing at the heart door and knocking. If we, if we go back to the Bible, the, the study we are, we are currently, um, we are currently have on the observation, remember they were self-seeking. They, they saw themselves as not in need. So materially, they were all right, but they, they were not affecting people spiritually. So when, when Jesus is in our midst, there, there is a burning, there's a zeal. So, and, and that is why, Brother Bennett, I, 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 not that I've been evasive, because I, what, what the, 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 the position I took, I want us to be all the brethren to start to think, you understand? But I hear Brother Scarlett respond, 
But I was really hoping that others would have responded because if we really take it to our local church, be, be honest and we analyze our local church, the Glendevon New Testament Church of God, it's a question that we would really want to ask. All right? So that's one of your questions. The other question. Brother Benny, you go? Yes, no, I'm here. I'm here. I was just letting you finish up. So okay. my other question would be um, um, like this. So being, I'm going to stick to the local church because being in the, in the local church, Rev, and with, with the, um, oh, no, I want to put it the right way. There's only one way to put it. With the lack of person sometimes to do God's work. And sometimes they'll, they'll tell you, why they don't feel like do it or they're just not in the mood to do it. There, there are times when I when when I'm when I feel tired just the same. But I always think about if I was at work as tired as I am, I would have to still be doing the work until I leave the property. Mm. So I always put that for me. But we still get that feeling that people are not that willing. Again, to work. I don't know. The, I don't want to go there, but the feeling is just that people just are not willing to work for God anymore. I don't, don't think if they think they are hurting someone else when they decline or not make themselves available. I, it's just a question why people just seems to be walking away from the work of God. Um. It, it begs to really question our relationship with, with God. Let us, when Isaiah got his call, and Isaiah saw himself, and the question was posed. He made himself available. When Jesus met Paul and Saul, Saul had the encounter with God. And he said, sir, if you look at it, Lord, that, that Lord is not Lord as in Jesus Christ, but as in master. <clears throat> Sorry. Who art thou, sir? And Jesus said, the one you are persecuting is hard. And he lined up. When Jesus was finished with, with, with Saul, Saul said, what will thou have me to do? Elijah, after he encountered and he dealt with so many of Baal's prophets. And he let one little woman put him to flight. And him go down and I want you to patriot and God said, where do you say, this is not your position. And him get up and go finish his job. Yes, there are days when we're going to feel like Juniper tree is the best option out. There are days when we can't understand, like David, when him see the wicked are prosper and the righteous are suffer. Like Abako, we can understand. And, and Abako said, on justice, not about. So watch it. But yeah, is it because of our righteousness and it is as if God is not doing anything while we take that stand? No. It is because of our indifferent attitude, because of our lukewarmness. When we look at, was it Sardis? Yeah. You heard your whole fast. Under pressure, poor, there are few in Sardis who will not soil their garment. So it is. Where is our commitment 
You know, sometimes I tell you, I love God, you know, man. I don't know why God never pushed me to finish this story. And just go, let the Holy Spirit drag you out right down in the, in the nick when we're supposed to do a um, rock selection sheet. <laughs> let me hope that it's a minute for something, you know. <laughs> Because, you see, Brother Bennett, we have to understand. It is not because of opposition and challenges at times where a lot of people are not working. People just become indifferent. We become so complacent because like Lodicians, we're good. We can find our nights, dinner. we have clothes and our back. We have pastor pedic and I don't even know if I do bed them at all about now. King size and you know, <laughs> hello. It's not like when the old, old time Kaya mattress are stick you, so you don't even want to go to bed early. <laughs> so you stay at church all till 12 o'clock at night. Amen. And you walk barefoot for all four or five miles going to church. When you go home, you have to catch a little water, throw on those feet to go to bed. No, man, as you come from downtown, we, we, we have our show up because COVID. So we are living almost like a luxurious life in a church. And that does not say to us, hey, give God thanks. What it says to us, them are right over church. Them lucky. I hope that helped you somewhat, my brother. Jesus is at the door knocking. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I was reading some of the comments in the chat about the question. Okay. Some say sad situation. Uh -huh. Full of themselves. Okay. Some... Go ahead, man. It, it's just some. It's just that sometimes it, it it's kind of. It's kind of discouraging, and I say it to you all the time. I don't know how you do it sometimes, but God never gave man more than we can do. Because it, it, you have you you're not you're not just running one ministry in the church. You're running the whole church. You know, so yes. you know when and that's it, heart rending because you see, at the end of the day, even when leaders drop the ball. It is not the leaders that the church blames. It is the pastor that gets the blame. And it is the pastor that is criticized and blamed for nothing not going on in the church. And even when the pastor meets with departmental leaders, call them, encourage them, come into meeting, talk what is happening, how can I help? And all the promises and they leave out of the office and they go and pledge to do this. And by the time they walk out of the office, everything that they have said drop right at the office door. But yet still it comes right back into the lap of the pastor. The pastor is not doing everything, anything. That's true. That's true, Rev. It always stops with the captain of the ship. Yes. Yes. Another, another comment just came in. He said, sir, I believe it's because of fear and many is criticized. You know, that's why people choose not to do anything. That can't be true. I know for a fact that a lot of people are scared because of what people might say are, that's true. That, that is a fear comment that was made. Ah, <laughs> God never give us the spirit of fear either. But but then what what the scripture says? The Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, yeah. but of power and of sound mind. You know, um, I, I I I shared with the church. I think it was last week. My first time traveling to the United States of America and going to our general assembly. It was at um, Indianapolis. And I, I was introduced to a minister by my eldest brother. My eldest brother is a minister also, well, for minister in the family. And um, when he introduced me to the minister, the minister asked me a question and said, I'm so pastor, what church 
are you at in Jamaica? And I said, churches. He said, two churches? I said, yes. And I told him the names of both churches. And he put his hands on his head. And he said, Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is either somebody hit you and why you're dead or God called you specially? You must not pastor one of these churches and then send to the other. He said, is it two wickedest churches in a Jamaica? I think I shared it with the officers the other night. But, you know, I spent, what, almost, when I, I went to one first, and then I was appointed to the other one, and I passed both churches and was doing district youth work at the same time. And I can tell you that youth work, when, when I went to that district, that district was what? At category C. And by the grace of God, with my youth board, we were able to, through youth work, move the church, the, the, the district from C to A. The district grew not because of the district pastor's work. And I went through, what, one, two, three district overseers. All of them have been deceased now. And you know the beauty of it? Any one of them before they deceased after I left there, when they see me, when one deceased while well, you know, I was still there. Other one was transferred, I was transferred. When they see me, the relationship, they take it, they, they come to themselves and call me poor well boy because <laughs> it's the type of relationship we have. So sometimes, you know, God put you into some areas because he has made you for those um, situations. Because, you know, but that does not excuse members from really stepping up to the Happen. The Bible says, when you go a vote, we must not defend a man. Maliki, stop it. Yeah. I didn't get that. So, Rev, it, so it, it all boils, boils down to one thing, our relationship with Jesus. Simple. Simple. So the moment we start to share, you know, our responsibility, you know, our duties, the first thing, we, the first step we need to take is to check on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't blame anybody. Don't even look at the pastor. And this is not an escape route. The first step needs to be taken is to examine, as Paul would have said, let every man examine his own self. See where one is with Christ. And once we do that, then we will see where we are. And if we Stop the blame game. Take responsibility. I don't come and blame the church. I look at myself and I say, Paul, what is it you doing? And if I can't find the answer with him, I said, God, what may I do? As I told the virgin in fasting today, I asked God, I said, what is it I'm doing that I should not be doing or not doing that I should be doing? I don't have time to go and blame the church. It has to do with your personal relationship. And it, it, it just, just jump back to verse 20 of the text. Jesus said, if any man, so while he addressed, I just get it out of myself, I whet your appetite. I normally do that. So I wait, wait your appetite. You have to come back next week. <laughs> so while he is calling the entire church, he brought it down to individuals. So what he was saying, if the entire church won't respond, you know, once you are in the church as an individual, what he said, don't watch anybody, each individual as a responsibility. So if the entire church, he said, what about you? So hey, Pastor, are you trouble? <laughs> Jesus said, I'm standing at your door. 
McCoy, Will Thompson, and, and, and the like. I'm seeing Scarlett, I'm hearing Bennett. I'm not seeing anybody else. But those, and I'm just picking on you guys, you know, just like that. So don't, don't, don't take it for any offense, all right? One uh, more, one more um, um, come back in the chat. It said, it said if, you, if you listen to what persons say in the church, uh, let me read it. It said, if you listen to what people are saying and behave, you will not take part in any church assignment. True, too. And that, that, that is so true. That is so true. Good, good, to, good to hear from you. Good to hear from you, Sister Michelle. Yeah, that is, that is, that is true. And, and, and just to say something from what was said in the conference on Friday, it, it, just, it does drive home with the Bible study. One of the presenters said he was talking about the multimedia platforms. Uh -huh. and, he, and he said what he realized that a lot of persons would complain about the quality of the of the the product the that's there that's coming out or, or the sound that's coming out. They'll they do all the complaining, but they are never there when you ask for help. Or a suggestion, always complaining. So I say, if you should listen to all the complaints, you will never move forward. But if you care how bad the video is and the audio is, there is always somebody watching. So don't That's be discouraged of what people say, of what you're doing. As long as you're doing and towards Christ and you do it to the best of your ability, do it. And that was that drive home to me when I was listening to that presenter. Because sometimes we, we shun away from things because we're scared of what other people go and say after we are through. That, but that's we remember, we're not doing it unto man, but unto God. I, I just saw Brother Scarlett just put a post on the, uh, the Zoom. If you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. Or you yes. must be a part of something. <laughs> and and, and that, is, that is so, so, so true. And as, as you rightly said, um, and as um, the, 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 the person typed in the chat, that if we listen to what church people say, and how they behave, you will no. not want, because it can be discouraging enough. Yes, yes. It can be disheartening. It can allow you to become flustered it drains your energy my god sometimes when you all you can hear is the negative the negative the negative and even when you are surrounded with so many positive that can be highlighted there's no positive all the we tear down I see, and, that, I see that and you can go ahead after Ravi's finished yeah, nine times out of ten when you tear down. Those who tear down never possess the ability to build. They only possess the ability to tear down. Go ahead, Brother Scarlett. It's, it's, it's just um, something that I normally use to even encourage you at times. Yes. Normally when you're at the pulpit, and I would say to you, Numbers 11 verses 11, you would know what I mean. But for many persons that are not aware of it, Moses came to God and said, God, if you love me, kill me. Me can't deal with them. God. Me can't deal with them. If you love me, God, kill me. Me can't deal with them people here. And it's because of people. Why not to see the promised land? So we have to be careful of the naysays and the hearsays and stick to the will of God. You, 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 you have to, and, and, and this is when, you see, when we allow Jesus to come into the midst, you know, when we allow Jesus to come, when we open the door, that's what makes the difference. When Jesus is in control, it makes the difference. You see, these things impact us when, when we are lukewarm, you know, we pay attention to all of these things. But when we allow the spirit of God, when we get earnest and man, sometimes like on a Sunday morning, 
you know, when they're doing the recognition, you know, how fast the people is traveling all the way from St. Tan and all of that and all of that. Yeah. But what keeps me going is my commitment to Almighty God. Because as I'm opening the church, I am called, I'm at the battlefront. So I am called. So I have a, 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 a earnestness, there's a sincerity. And even when sometimes there are those who talk about money, you know, flood that meaning because that is the last thing. <laughs> That's the last thing. I, I don't think about it one bit. Let me be honest with you. Don't think about it one bit. My desire is to serve God, to please God. So I don't want to become lukewarm. So my door is open. And Jesus comes in. And as I said, that's what makes the difference. When you have Jesus with you, you know, whatever the situation, what Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that the what? Gives me the strength. Yeah, rather praise God than men. All right, back to you, Brother Bennett. We thank all those who are commenting on the chat in YouTube. And if you have not yet subscribed, please to subscribe to our channel. Please to like and share. And yes, you are commenting. You are doing well. We really appreciate it. We thank you much. And we really appreciate you joining us for a moment in the world. Brother Benny. Any other questions? I think, I think we're going to have to turn up, turn up this thing and match in there. We have a a panel discussion on these nights. Well, um, we, we are coming down to the, the gravy of um, this one, you know, so we can do a recap. I'm, I'm planning that we can just do a, a, a reflection, a recap on, on the seven. Okay. Uh, you know, after we finish, hopefully I'll finish next week. So the following week we can recap and discuss, and then we, we can take it, take it from, from there. Any other questions? Okay, Rep seems that there's no other question. So I'm gonna ask the question now. What was our takeaway from tonight's lesson? You can type in the chat, what, what's your takeaway? You can say it one at a time. My take away. Go ahead, go ahead. Good night, brothers and sisters. Good night, Rev. Good night, brother. My takeaway tonight is the scripture says, Behold, I come at the door and knock. If any man open, I will come in and sup with him. That is my takeaway. All right. Open the door, Jesus will come in and sup with him. Very good, very good. Um, Brad Scarlett, you might need to repost your takeaway. I don't know why your post them come off so fast than a man. You need to repost your that was your takeaway. Yes, sir. I was saying that God loves us too much to force us into his presence. Yes, yes, very good, very good. Any more persons with a takeaway? Remember, your takeaway can be there's something you're not sure about, and you want clarity, or anything like that. My takeaway, Rev, is always to remember that Christ's job is bigger than what any man can ever think. Okay. That is my that is my takeaway. Doing Christ's job is, is more important mm -hmm. than, any, than anything else. Wonderful. 
Wonderful. We're not hearing that one. And Sister Reed, we're not hearing it. I, I didn't get, we didn't get that. Um, which it sounded like Sister Reed, I'm not sure it was her. Yeah, could you please type your taker because we couldn't hear you clearly. Are you hearing me? Yeah, much better. Good night, Mr. Henry. Nice. My takeaway is recognize, recognize that you are lukewarm and repent with the true heart. You better type that one. Still yeah. didn't get it. Yeah, there's one more in the chat from Marlene. It said, Fear must not impact our decision in praising our serving God. That's our takeaway. All right. Um, another one in the chat, Sister uh, Michelle said, um, we need to be obedient to God when he speaks. Very good, very good. We need um, for Latoya Shakes. We, as Christians, need to step out of our pride, do the work what we are called to do. All right. Any other takeaway? Well, folks, you can post post it in the chat. You know, go ahead. Okay, Rev, seems that there is no more takeaway. Okay. I'm All looking right. for I'm looking for prayer requests. I know I got one sent to my cell phone. Person is unknown. They just said right. they need spiritual prayer. To be let me see. Asking for prayer for spiritual strength. All right. Just, uh, just said Bell just typed in God chase those who to be chastised those whom he loved. That's her take away. All right, the person is requesting prayer for spiritual strength. Spiritual strength. All right, no problem. There's another takeaway from Angela Reed. My takeaway is that if we love God, we will work for him. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank God for all the responses, these takeaways, to help us to um, ensure that you are understanding and that the word of God is being impactful. All right, so it's prayer time. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we pause this evening in appreciation and thanksgiving of your love towards us. We thank you that you are God and God alone. A God who cares. A God who is always seeking. Your love is incomparable. There's none that we can put you beside. Lord, you always desire us of, of having your children in a relationship. So you are always seeking to bring us into that relationship. We thank you for the study this evening. And even though, Lord, not everyone was able to type in their takeaway, I would pray and I would want to imagine, Lord, that everyone would have a, a takeaway from tonight's story. Help us, Lord, that when we shall come off these platforms, we'll not just forget about the story, but we'll think upon the story, even as we 
go to our beds tonight. Lord, we take this request to you for spiritual strength. You know the request which has been made. This is in accordance with your word. The Lord, we should let our request be made known by our prayers and supplication. So your child, almighty God, is requesting strength. Lord, spiritual strength. Obviously, Lord, there are challenges that your child is encountering. And Lord, your child want to be a value, to be in your service. Lord, to walk uprightly, to be in your will, to have fellowship with you, that koinonia. Lord, your child want to experience this unique relationship, recognizing, Lord, that as a child, as mortal, the individual is weak. But as the psalmist said, that you are our refuge and our strength. Lord, we are weak, but you are strong. So I pray tonight, Almighty God, that your Holy Spirit will empower your child. Lord, if it's an individual who was fearful, I pray, God, that you will remove fear. I pray you'll give the spirit of boldness, the spirit of sound mind. I pray you'll give, Lord, the spirit of willingness, commitment, and dedication. We pray for those who are sick tonight. Brother Dwight Taylor, who is not doing well, I pray for him. I pray for a Holy Ghost visitation. Lord, we speak healing to his being right now. Wherever he is right now, God, even if he is asleep, we pray you show up. Present help, great physician, eternal in the heavens, most high God. Oh, all sufficient one. The God who is able to do exceedingly more than we are able to ask or even think. Do for your son, do I tailor tonight. Lord, those who are struggling, we pray for help. We pray for the bereaved families in the church. Sister Wedderburn, we pray for Sister Opie Scott and her family, family of Sister Maud Evans. These saints, Lord, it, uh, earthly sojourn have come to an end. So we pray that you will strengthen the families as they go through this challenging time. We pray you succor them under your loving heart. Like a hen gather chicken under her wings, even so, Lord, we pray you'll gather these, your people. We pray for the church of Glendevon. We pray for every individual, Lord, who has been on these platforms, not only tonight, but over these months, as we spend time in your words, I pray their strength. I pray courage. I pray healing. I pray their well being. I pray that doors that are locked, these are doors that you need to be to open. You will open them for them. There are some doors for some of these, your dear children which the enemy, Lord, has opened doors that bring affliction because they have been opened, God, they've caused pain, sorrow, disheartening. They have caused affliction, turmoil, sicknesses, 
weaknesses. Lord, they have caused loss of jobs and God, family dispute and relational dispute. These are doors that the enemy has opened. So Lord, we pray that you intervene tonight and you close these doors. And once you close them, then no one can open them. I pray you open doors of health, prosperity, spiritual strength, spiritual stability, new vision, doors of anointing. Lord, open doors that they can hear you when you speak. Lord, as we shall, Lord, come off these platforms. We are in our different home, homes, Lord. As we retire for the night, night, be with us. Lord, we pray that every individual will experience a restful night tonight. So we come against every disturbing spirit, every invading spirit, every evil spirit. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will tabernacle with your children. And we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. We thank you again, Rev, for making yourself available to do the will of God. We really appreciate you. Really. you. So if there's no more questions or queries, I'm going to ask you Rev, to do the benediction. Can you raise your right hands with me? May the blessings of Almighty God be with you. May the blessings of God overflow you. May you be strengthened and lifted up by God's great blessings. May his blessings give you peace of mind. May his blessing prospers you. Prospers you in all your endeavors. May his blessings be with you on your job in all your life, your family life, your individual life, your spiritual life, social life, your financial life. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship, communion of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, Abide with us all now and forever. And the people of God say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Again, let me say thanks to everyone who have been on the platform this evening. Those who have joined us via YouTube, Facebook. I don't know if the Instagram page was um, advertised. Yes, we are going places, Brother Scarlett. <laughs> if, you, if you have not yet received it, you will receive it on the Facebook link because we want to reach as much person. So we ask you, please, if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please to subscribe. If you have not shared it with friends and families, please do so. The more subscribers we have, it's the better we will be assured that we will be on YouTube for a long time to come. God bless you. Have a great night. Enjoy yourself. And if we never meet again, on the hair, we will meet in the hair. God bless you. God bless you. Have a blessed night, everyone. Take care. Bless Have you. a blessed night, Rev. Bless you. Have a blessed night, everyone. Bless you. Bless you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.